Hi, welcome to Windstar World Casino. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite games. It's called Pi Gal Poker. It's a variation of normal poker where we're going to start with seven cards and make two hands out of it. Now, like any poker based game, you have to know a little something about poker to play this game. But as always at the Windstar, our staff is always ready and willing to help you. So anytime you have any question about any table game in the Windstar, please don't hesitate to ask. We'd love to answer your questions and we'd love to see you here and see you on the Pi Gal table. This is probably my personal favorite of all the games to play because it's relaxing, it's thoughtful, it's a little slower paced than some of the other games and I've always had a great time playing it. Now, you have to understand poker as I said, so you need to have a basic understanding of poker ranks and how they work. Uh, if you have that, then this game's gonna be a breeze. The dealer starts out by dealing everyone seven cards. Now, we usually use a machine to do Pi Gal, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just gonna deal seven cards out. Make sure I've got seven. Yep, seven cards, and that's gonna be your hand as the player. And now I'm gonna deal myself seven cards. Now in Pi Gal, you have to take the seven cards that you're dealt and make two poker hands out of them. So let's see what we have. Looks like in this hand, the best thing I can make out of these cards is, do I have it? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, I've got a flush. I've got five cards of the same suit and that's a flush. So if I were playing this game, that's gonna be my high hand. The five cards are the high hand that go in the back. Now, I don't have to play the flush as a player. I can play the cards any way as I want, as long as the highest is in the back and the second highest is in the front. What you can't do, for example, would be say, play a pair of eights and put them in the front because there's nothing else left that beats those eights. But if I were to play this hand as a Pi Gal player, I take my five best cards, my, my best poker hand out of these seven, which would be my flush. And then the two cards I have left are gonna be my second high hand. So in this hand, this player has a flush in the back, which is great, but they don't have a very good top hand. Second highest hand is only a 10 and an eight. Let's see what the dealer's got. When the dealers turn their cards over in Pi Gal, the first thing they'll do is rank their hand. That means they'll take the cards from highest to lowest, from left to right. Once they've done that, they'll identify what their best poker hand is and they'll play the hand like you the player would play your hand, with one exception. The house must set their hand to the house way. That means we don't have the discretion to set the hand any differently anytime. We always have to set our hands the same way every time. Whereas you as a player, for example, on this hand here, if you had wanted to play the pair of eights in back and an ace queen in front as your second highest hand, you could have done that. You didn't have to play the flush. We have to play our hand the same way every time. So let's put it back to the way we had it set with the flush in back and the next two best cards up front. And now let's set the bank hand, or in this case, the house hand. Well, I'm looking at this and I have three of a kind, which is really good. That's gonna be my high hand. And then I look to see what the next best thing I have is. Well, I don't have any other pairs. I don't have a flush or a straight. Obviously for a two card hand, we can't have a flush or a straight. So I'm just gonna take the next two highest cards, which in my case are the eight and the seven. And that's the way I'm gonna set this hand. So in this case, the bank or the, in the house has an eight, seven up with trip fours back. That's trip fours in the back and eight seven up. Let's compare it with the hand that we just set for our player. The player has a 10 eight up. Well, the 10 and the eight are gonna beat my eight and seven. So that's a win for the player. I have three fours in back. They have a flush in back. If you know poker, you know that flush is pretty good. So flush is gonna beat three of a kind. This player just won the bet because he won the front and he won the back. And remember, you have to win both to win and lose both to lose. Let's take a look at the player's hand. Remember, seven cards, two poker hands, five in back, two in front. Okay, well, first thing that jumps out at me in this hand 
is this pair of kings and this pair of tens. This is a really great hand to have in Pygo because it's real easy to figure out how we're going to play this. The kings are the high hand, the tens are the second high hand. So the kings are going to go in back with the nine, seven, and six kind of along for the ride. And then the tens, which are second high because as we know, king are higher than ten. So the pair of kings beats the pair of tens. They don't beat them, but they're the second high. So the player has a pair of kings in back and a pair of tens in front. That's a really good hand. Let's see what the house has. Remember the dealer is always going to rank their hand. All right, I see two pair for the house as well. The house has a pair of tens and a pair of threes. And the rules state, in this case, because we don't have a king or better, we're going to split those pair up just like the player did. So how are we going to play it? We're going to put the threes in front as our second high. We're going to put the tens in back as our high hand and the jack nine and two are along for the ride. Let's see how it compares to the player. The player has a pair of tens in front. We have a pair of threes in front. The player wins that one. Player has a pair of kings in back, we have a pair of tens in back. Player wins that one. So the player wins the second high and the high. He wins both, he wins. If you lose both, you lose. Now occasionally, a lot of times actually, what's going to happen is that you're going to win one. Well, let's see, how can I set this up? Yeah, we'll do it that way. You're going to win one and lose the other one. So if I just move these two cards around, it looks like here we have a pair of tens in front and a pair of tens in back. Now obviously 10-10 jack beats 10-10. So this is fine. This is the way the house would set the hand. However, the tens are going to beat the threes in this case and his kings are going to beat my tens. That means the player lost this one but they won the back. So what happens? If you lose one and win the other, it's a push. That happens quite a lot in Pi Gal, which makes this game a lot of fun to play because it's not as fast paced as say blackjack or some of the other games we offer at Windstar World Casino. Well, I hope you liked the lesson. PyGal is not really that hard to play. If you have a basic understanding of poker, you'll catch on to PyGal real quick. And like I said, anytime you have any questions on any game we offer at Windstar World Casino, don't hesitate to ask us. We're always happy to help you, and we look forward to seeing you here on the PyGal table at Windstar World Casino. Thanks for watching.